Hello there, my fellow bog people, and welcome to the Witcher Bestiary. The series where we describe the monsters, creatures, and other entities from the Witcher universe. A good number of weeks ago, back when I did my Kikimors video, I promised I would return to the category and describe some more of these creatures from the insectoid branch. Thus, today we shall cover another breed of bug monsters and its multiple variations. Ladies and gentlemen, they are the Arakas family. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? So, the Arakas, also known as the Araxe or Crab Spiders. They also appear in two of the Witcher games, the second and the third ones, and come in at least a couple of variations. Fortunately, there are journal entries aplenty for them. To quote, Arachnids are lone hunters. They patiently wait for their prey to kill it with one quick strike when it appears. The same is true for the Arakas does, a huge creature that took a liking to the riverside forest, becoming its undisputed king. A ruler who doesn't tolerate any others in its territory, including witches. Araxe are large, slow, and protected by a durable armor. The carapace, as the witchers call this armor, is especially tough at the front, so it is much easier to wound a creature from the side or the back. The Araka's charges make an excellent opportunity for that. One has to evade the charge at all costs though by stepping out of the beast's way, and then to make one's blow. Without a doubt, it is best to use the strong style then. The Arakas has no fear of poison, and not much of fire either. Its primitive nervous system will barely react to being wounded, and its incredible vitality allows it to take even the greatest of wounds and keep on coming. The beast will heal them afterwards anyway, all the while digesting its prey. When all is said and done, the Arakas is a bug, so one's blade should be coated with the insectoid oil before fighting it. The monster's susceptibility to this blade coating is probably its biggest weakness. The monster can easily all shrug off the other witcher tricks, so common poisons are useless and the witcher signs are of limited use, not to mention any attempt to knock the colossus down. Powerful pincers, a maw filled with razor-sharp teeth and venom glands packed with deadly toxins, these constitute the Arakas' deadly arsenal. Since people and farm animals make an important part of the creature's diet, contracts on Araxe in turn constitute a good source of wealth for the witcher. Once upon a time native to the far south, this species migrated north over the course of several decades, adjusting as it went to the new climates and temperatures. It found damp woodlands and swamps most hospitable, and made them its home making use of the muck and moss found there as blankets during the winter hibernation. The Arakas will hide its unprotected, sack-like abdomen under a covering of hollow tree trunks worn on its back. At first glance, a stationary Arakas will often look like a part of the environment, a fact that it uses to deadly advantage when hunting. It usually begins by spitting venom, then trying to grab its prey with prehensile feelers in order to drag it within reach of its crushing pincers. Now, in my opinion, the Arakas is definitely in a higher tier of enemy in The Witcher than your average Necker or Drowner or even Wraith. They are big, they are armored, and they can kill you in a couple of blows. They also fit into a bit of a strange position, as, at least as far as I can remember, the very first Arakas you fight in The Witcher 2 is actually a bit of a mini-boss. In The Witcher 3, however, they are not as eventful a fight, although they are still very strong, especially because you can find multiple examples of them in the world. Like I said in the beginning, there is more than just one type of Arakas. These creatures have their own hierarchy structure, but under regular conditions they live alone and do not build colonies. There are several highly specialized subspecies of Arakas, each one with a unique advantage necessary for survival. So, for example, the armored Arakas builds up a powerful, almost impenetrable shell to protect their soft belly. The poisonous ones produce a huge amount of powerful poison and then they use that in a variety of ways. And the most dangerous and rare are the queens. 
Fortunately for all of you insect lovers out there, we're gonna say a few words about age. An arachas' only weakness is the soft, sensitive abdomen. Some araxae hide this under hollow tree stumps, while other, armored varieties exist which have grown a thick carapace covering all the more delicate parts of their body. An armored arachas is a true behemoth. It uses its great mass to knock one over and trample its victim and then devour their crushed remnants. It is also worthwhile to stock up on healing potions and crossbow bolts before setting out, for the arachas' thick plating can withstand a huge amount of damage, making a battle with it a very long and exhausting affair. Once provoked, araxae of both regular and armored varieties will quickly attempt to close the gap between them and the prey, either by skittering across the ground, leaping at a victim, or by spitting a sticky secretion and dragging the unlucky soul to them. When in close combat, an arachas is brutal and very quick, its sharp foreclaws lashing out at incredible speed. A skilled witcher can actually parry these and temporarily even stun the enemy. If both forelegs are raised and the mouth is exposed, the arachas will strike with such force that no man, witcher or otherwise, can hope to block it. This will happen with such speed as well that the attack may well strike true even if the victim knows it's coming. As mentioned, the golden oriole is a must against all insectoids. Bites from an arachas are inherently venomous, and they're also fond of spitting venom at distant targets. The Yirdan sign does manage to slow them down a bit and make combat a bit easier. Good bolts for a crossbow can be of great help as well, particularly when they open their mouth wide. The armored variety of Araxe can resist sword strikes easily, even more so than the other varieties. The carapace surrounding their abdomens is particularly problematic. Although all Araxe are highly venomous, the straightforwardly named Venomous Araxe produce an especially strong toxin. A few drops of this are enough to kill any man, unless the man is a witcher of course, whose mutations will neutralize small amounts of the venom. Larger quantities, however, will kill anything they touch, with mutations only prolonging the inevitable death and making it more painful. The venomous araxae produce colossal amounts of the toxin and deploy it in combat in multiple ways. Before striking, a venomous araxae will cover its pincers and teeth with a thick coating of the deadly liquid. It will then squirt the venom at the opponent to weaken it, and once locked in direct combat, it will continue spraying the noxious ooze all around itself, making sure that every breath will bring the victim closer to death. Once again we got to mention the golden aureole, which will reduce a body's vulnerability to poison. To make this potion, you will require the blowball plant, light essence, and dwarven spirits. Out of all the arachas types, this is the one you should focus on defeating at a range the most. Attack from a safe distance with crossbow and bombs, before dealing the finishing blow with a silver sword, of course enhanced with insectoid oil. Which brings us to the so-called Arachas Queen. Like the rest of the Araxae, their queen is a huge insectoid monster. The queen surpasses even the biggest individuals in strength and size. As a rule, all Araxae have a vulnerable body, not protected by chitinous armor. Unfortunately for it, the queen suffers from this weakness the most, as it has a huge belly used to create cocoons and produce its offspring. Usually, Araxe lead a solitary and reclusive lifestyle in a certain wooded or marshy areas, but they do not build extensive colonies. This will change when a queen appears in the area, however, as, it having innate biological characteristics and releasing the strongest pheromones, it forces all the other Araxe to obey it. Then they will help her build a nest for laying eggs, protecting her and her brood from the enemies, and also bring her food. When all the process is done, the adults will disperse back to their land, and the queen moves on to occupy and populate a new territory. According to the scholars of the Oxenford University, in most insects and insectoids, the queen of the swarm is the most defenseless. Araxe are an exception to this rule. Their queens are the biggest and strongest individual in the swarm. One drop of their venom is enough to knock a grown man off his feet and with one claw hit they can cut through a Nilfgaardian shield. When two different queens and their swarms fight for territory, 
all the other animals in the area will flee as if from a fire. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the scary Arrakas family of insectoids for today. While the likes of Kikimors and even Andregas are fairly dangerous in their own right, the Arrakas is an order of magnitude higher when it comes to how powerful and dangerous they are. Fun fact, initially this video was intended to be about the Arrakas and the Koshche and the Frightener creatures, but it turns out that the Arrakas had a lot more lore behind it than I thought. Of course I'm gonna cover those too in another video in the future. Either way, I'm glad I got to make a dedicated video just for the Arrakas. They are quite interesting creatures. What about you though? Are you fans of Witcher Insectoids or this big scary bug? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode, do consider supporting the series by watching, liking, commenting and subscribing. Thanks a lot for watching and the blessing of Melitale be upon you.